Are you sure your stroker manifold is supported like this? Or is it modified like what you see here? Which one is your manifold? The one on the left or on the right? We'll cover this. But before we start, let's look at some cars. That's a problem with heavy maintenance engines. Yeah, so don't decide. Please subscribe, like, comment, and share. Thank you. Uh, a lot of these videos, and I'm thankful for a lot of your feedback, saying that uh, my tips and videos have helped a lot of you guys build better engines, and hopefully that was that was my intent, is to keep everybody uh, informed on how to build a lot better engines uh, or better than the way you had it before. And like I said, it helps you guys. It helps me too because when I get the feedback from everybody else, it verifies what I said and you guys back it up with your experience. So I'm not a know-it-all. There are so many other better engine builders out there, so many better cylinder head guys. And I just accumulate a lot of experience and a lot of track times. And I try to uh, forward this to all of you guys. And... Uh, it benefits uh, my viewers. It benefits me as well. And uh, like I said, uh, it makes me feel good when I, I hear a lot of your, um, you know, responses and say, hey, man, it works great. And today I was at a Cars and Coffee uh, out here by Vegas, and I had another uh, person comes up to me and it says, hey, uh, I redid my engine. I'm so freaking happy. And I've followed a lot of your advice. And Hey, it's been running very, very good. I go, oh, thank you. Thank you. appreciate it. I'm humbled by such uh, words. But anyway, again, today this is another uh, video tip. And like what I said earlier about, uh, you know, the stroker engines buying oil pan that was really designed for, you know, a uh, uh, stock stroke combination. And like I said, the oil sump is that far away from the crankshaft, and now you have a, a stroker crank with half an inch of stroke, or maybe more in some of these uh, stroker Fords, up to three quarters of an inch. It becomes a disaster. Remember when you look at your dipstick, when you push it into the to the block and check your oil level, between full and low, you know what? It, it's I don't even think it's half an inch. Sometimes you go, okay, you look closely. You can barely tell where the lower level is at between low and high. So it just shows to you how sensitive this whole scenario is. But here you go. That said, just to remind everybody how the manufacturers sometimes fail to basically shed light on some of these concerns. And here we go again. All right? Uh, intake manifolds is what we're going to touch upon. When you have, how should I say it? Okay, I know for the Fords and Chevys and a lot of, you know, manifolds, even for the Chrysler, are designed for a 350, or 351, 340, whatever, 360. What's happening here, stroker engines are getting to be more common than before. I don't think hardly anybody builds a, a stock 350 already, you know, they, they go with a 383 and guys go with a, you know, with a 408 or, or bigger. I mean, think about what happens here. This intake manifold, Edelbrock does a good 
um, job designing their manifolds, okay? And uh, it's hard to beat them. Some of the other manufacturers, same thing. They put a lot of R&D, dyno testing, track testing. That is what's going on. But here you go. When you have a manifold designed for a 350 or a 351, now you're 50 cubic inches bigger than that for a 383. You're a little bit over 30, you know, 33 cubic inches. That's significant. Usually what happens is the runners are a bit tad small, so you can port it out and make the flange bigger going to the inside. All right? That's great. But what a lot of people forget is the plenum volume. All right? You can match port the manifold to the head or to your bigger CC cylinder head now. You know, before you used to run a 119, now with your stroker, you're up to 220, 240. But what happens is that a lot of them, there's hardly any plenum volume increase. When you increase the port, okay, the port itself, make it a little bit larger. That is correct. But sometimes you're still strapped with a doggone intake manifold and the plenum is not really opened up significant. Why do I say this? Years ago, I have this uh, customer who says to me, Ben, I, I got a, I think he's got a 572 or he's got a 540. I mean, 540 cubic inch uh, Vega. Now, he eventually have one of those or I think he held the record at Irwindale Speedway, uh, one of the fastest, or is the fastest pass there on a big block Chevrolet. And at that time, I don't know if it's the same engine, but I did the heads for him. Uh, he set the track record there before it closed. I think somebody took it. But anyway, that said, um, he called me up. Ben, uh, you spoke to me before about having my... Uh, Intake manifold uh, opened up, and I think it's a Brodix. I said, yes, yes you, you do need that. Because, you know, that was designed for 427, 44. Now yeah, I know you're about 540 or 572. We need to open that up. And he goes, really? I mean, it's been ported. They raced the, you know, they opened up the runners. I said, I'm looking at it. You don't even have a spacer on there. You have the dominator sitting on top of that. We need to open that whole plenum up. All right? The porting is probably good enough. Match ported to the head. It matches up. He's got a big uh, uh, intake runner. But you need some plenum volume in there. He goes, really? And his car runs, uh, I think, 520, the 8? 520? Low fives, all right? So uh, he <laughs> he calls me up. Meet me up at the bottom of, <laughs> of the 15 and uh, doggone... Uh, no, no, the 14 and the 5 freeway, right there by Valencia. But we came down towards Canyon Country, and he got on his bike. He put it on the back there. No, no, it was his backpack. He got his manifold out there. I was laughing when it showed up, and he hands me the manifold. I said, man, you had this on your backpack? Go, yeah, that's the only way I could bring this thing. I go, all right. So I took it, and I looked at it, and it, it looks like this. The manifold, here it is. The porting was beautiful, beautifully done, and from the impression of the uh, gasket, it was matched up really good. So whoever did it was great. However, <laughs> here we are. A slight cleanup on the plenum. All right, probably put a hand roll in there. Let me just clean it up a bit. So uh, remember, this was designed for a 454 or 427 at a time. The manifold was for those cubic inches. But this man is probably going 540 or 570 or maybe even larger. He won't really tell me directly. All he, needed, all he said was it had a stroker. So it's anybody's guess. But I knew I had to make something. Need to open it up. Wow. No spacers. No, no. You need space. You need to pick up that volume. But anyway, I did open it up, and it went from here to here. If you guys notice, I pulled back the runner, okay, right at the plenum, you know, where it's curved coming into the intake ports. I strained that out, but I did not make 
the splitter sharp. I kept it rounded, okay? Because if it's very sharp, it looks good on a flow bench, but the fuel mixture or the fuel particles or molecules tend to stick on the edge of that port. I wanted to have a somewhat rounded, not blunt, so that it basically breaks them up and continues on mixed with the airflow. Very important, guys. You don't want to do none of that crazy, fancy looking thing that looks good on a flow bench, but really doesn't do very much for performance. Okay, here to here, <laughs> look at it. If you look closely, there is a big difference. Now the doggone thing will breathe a lot better and there's not much rubbing going on with a, with a very uh, restrictive or small plenum. A lot of cylinders to cylinder uh, distribution issues. Now, if you look closely, the plenum is so much larger, even though the picture on the left is a lot smaller. If I put it up on the same scale, flange to flange or bolt pattern to bolt pattern, you can just see how much larger the Dargon plenum is compared to the stock one. Remember, the one on the picture on the picture on the left, the modified one, is actually a smaller picture, but still looks larger overall. So take note of that. And then I had him put a, I think a two-inch spacer on top of that. So I know he's apprehensive. You know, I mean, I never dealt with him before. And so uh, he takes it to the racetrack at Irwindale and makes a first pass with the new combination, just an intake manifold. And guess what happened? He was like blown away. How bad? He blew his foot off. And the finish line came off because now he's running so much faster. I don't know, like four to six miles an hour higher than he was before. No other changes, guys. All right. So just the plan of work and the spacer because his engine, since it's a bigger lung capacity, bigger cubic inch, he needs more uh, plenum area. Okay? And from what I see, the guy that did the runner on the manifold looks like it's enough. All right? Individually, if I flow test at each one of those intake ports, they are, they're done up real nice. So whoever did the manifold before was good. But the plenum wasn't enough. The plenum was too small. So he goes to make a pass, blows the hood off, and <laughs> it goes much quicker. How fast? Fast. All right? Uh, I think it's a street racer, too, so I'm not going to say nothing. Okay? So uh, it's somewhere around low fives, high fours. That's where he's at with this thing. Now, that said, he was really surprised. And eventually, I ended up doing a cylinder head for him. Uh, more like one of those symmetrical Ford, I mean, symmetrical big block Chevy uh, intake. Now I ended up with uh, one of those symmetrical uh, DRC uh, cylinder head that I did uh, the intake and exhaust parts in it. And I gave it to him and he finished it up doing the valve job and all that. But here we go. He was surprised. And I know a lot of you guys out there, right? You have a Trinity one with your Super Victor or Victor manifold, or you know, when you have a mild setup, you don't think you need a Super Victor, you just need a Victor. Add some plenum, add some plenum volume on there. You're not going to go wrong. All right. So, when somebody has a massively stroke engine like 4170 stroke, you know, now you're 426 or 436 or 432 small block Ford or 408. And you have no spacer, no plenum volume, you're hurting that combination. Again, somebody also, uh, I did a blow through supercharged small block floor versus somebody out there. And it's the same thing. He picked up so much power, and I said to him, We have a limitation because you have a blow through carburetor pushing down on that plenum. I made the plenum as big as possible. So there's less robbing, you know, between uh, runners. I gave a space to expand and hopefully turn towards the individual runners. And same thing. He picked up a lot of ET. Dino, 
Sure, they'll tell you something. But I've seen some where mi minor help on the dyno or hardly shown anything. Go back to the track and there's a big difference. All right? So, again, uh, plenum volume. Let me stress to everybody else. If you can put, and a lot of people out there can put a, a spacer on there, and they say, hey, you picked up speed. But let me warn somebody out here, too. Sometimes putting spacers on a dyno, the more spacers you add, the more power you're picking up. I don't doubt that. But remember, when you're doing your, your, your dyno pull, you're already rolling. Okay, 3,500, 45, then you match the pedal. It's a whole different scenario when your car's sitting in the line and you stab the gas, take off, or when you have a transfer gear on the rev, then you take off, plenum volume comes into play. All right? And sometimes that four inch spacer, four and a half inch spacer, five inch spacer, I've seen some guys have this big stack on, underneath their doggone uh, carburetor. You know, and, and yeah, the dyno showed power. It goes to the racetrack now, slowed down. Now they revert back to a shorter spacer or a combination of four hole spacer with an open spacer, so forth, so on. All right. So usually the dyno will tell you because it's a top end pool. Like you, you test your power in fourth gear, you're going top end. You're already rolling at 100 plus. That is what a dyno is trying to simulate, not from a standing still. And that tells you how far that signal. If you're able to recover your, your, your pressure underneath the carburetor, is it lacking? Is there too much vacuum in there? Or are you able to come back and gain some of that uh, intake manifold pressure so I did go to the runners? So those are those scenarios. We can get complicated. I'm just trying to keep it simple for everybody here. Okay, so guys, uh, what else did I All right, that's, that's it, basically. Okay? Uh, Watch out on the spacer. Don't go too much. If you're on the dyno, the more you add, the better it looks. You go to the racetrack, you slow it down. There's a point of diminishing returns, all right? So maybe if you have a four-inch spacer in there, or four and a half or five-inch, I've seen everybody's happy about it. Hey, we gained some more. I kept, you know, and I, I don't doubt it, all right? But now when you come down to the line, now you're, the edge is getting pulled down from the converter or the clutch, uh, now it's a whole different scenario. Uh, pressure recovery now underneath the carburetor, uh, throttle body comes into play. All right, so uh, again, uh, look at these pictures and take note of that. Just open up, shorten some of the runners. Remember, the, the you know, whatever that 454 manifold was designed for, and now you're 572 or 540 or, or 520, uh, you need to give it space. Give it some lungs, we call it, all right? So, hey, guys, this is quick. I hope it helps.